is this nucleophile going to attack from in front or from behind? From behind. It has to attack from behind because the leaving group is in front. You might get confused because the methyl group is behind here, but you still have to attack opposite to where the leaving group is. Since the leaving group is in front, we have to attack from behind. So is the nucleophile going to end up on a wedge or a dash? Will the nucleophile here end up on a wedge or a dash when it attacks this carbon, if it's attacking from behind? So where does this methyl group go? The methyl group must get pushed forward to a wedge. The methyl group here is getting pushed forward to a wedge. And how about the leaving group? Will the leaving group end up on a wedge or a dash? Because that bond isn't changing. Again, we had a backside attack. The nucleophile ends up opposite to where the leaving group is. And that has to push the methyl group forward. This, in some ways, this is still like SN2 because we're getting inversion of configuration where the methyl group used to be behind, now the methyl group is in front. That leaves us with a positive charge, which we can get rid of with a deprotonation. We can use the sulfate that we produced in the previous step for that deprotonation. We've seen that sometimes when you attack an epoxide, you attack the more substituted carbon. And sometimes when you're attacking an epoxide, you attack the less substituted carbon. So how can we tell which one it's going to be? Well, you, wh why didn't we attack the more substituted carbon here? Because of the carbocation character argument. But that only applied here because we had this positive charge. So we're going to attack the more substituted carbon when the epoxide that we're attacking has a positive charge. That's the idea that we need to have in our notes. If we're attacking an epoxide with a positive charge, we're going to attack the more substituted carbon because it has more carbocation character. On the other hand, if you're attacking a neutral epoxide, there is no positive charge, so there is no carbocation character type argument. There's no carbocation character here because there's no positive charge, so now we should attack the less sterically hindered mm -hmm. carbon. So the big thing is to see here we were attacking a neutral epoxide, so we attacked the less sterically hindered carbon, the less substituted. But here we were attacking an epoxide with a positive charge. Well, now we want to attack the carbon with more carbocation character, which means we're attacking the more substituted. When you're attacking an epoxide, a neutral epoxide, you attack the less substituted carbon because there's less steric hindrance. And when you're attacking an epoxide with a positive charge, you attack the more substituted carbon because that has more carbocation character. Of course, this didn't start with a positive charge, but it had a positive charge after we protonated it. So another way of putting it is, if you're working in acidic conditions, in acidic conditions, the epoxide will end up protonated, and then you're going to end up attacking the more substituted carbon. Mm -hmm. But in basic conditions, the epoxide won't end up protonated. So then you'll attack the less substituted carbon because of the steric hindrance argument. That's actually pretty commonly tested. That's called regiochemistry, when there's two different regions in the molecule that can react. So we've seen what the regiochemistry is for when you're attacking a neutral epoxide or a positive epoxide. But in both of these cases, you always attack from the side that's opposite to the leaving group. That was the, that was the stereochemistry here. The stereochemistry for these two cases were the same. In both of these cases, the leaving group was on wedges, so the nucleophile came in on a dash. In this case, that pushed the methyl group forward onto a wedge. Both of these cases have the same stereochemistry, but they have different regiochemistry. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box.
Thank you.